YouTube, what is up Giants fans, it is your boy Jay Downs, we are back at it with another New York Giants video, back at it with another New York Giants banger, and before we get to this one, if you've not done so yet, make sure you leave a like, make sure you comment, and make sure you subscribe button if you love Giants football, and if you love Giants content. Now let's hop right into this one, in this video, I will be naming off some of my Giants who I think have the most pressure and the most to prove in 2022, this upcoming season, we're going to start it off with Kadarius Tony, I feel like Kadarius Tony has to prove he was worth taking in the first round. First off, he has to show that he can be that reliable guy on and off the field. He has to also show that he really dedicated to football. And those are question marks over Kadarius Tony. A lot of people are low on KT. Some guys are high, like me. I think KT has the chance to be special, man. Look at the look at the small sample size last year. When you're looking at when he had the ball in his hands, pause. He was dynamic. It was, you got to get off your feet. You got to glue your eyes to the screen because Kadarius Tony's making moves. And when you're looking at that, if I can get that on a game-to-game -game basis, K Kadarius Tony's going to be special. He's going to be special. But first, he has to prove he can stay healthy. He has to prove he can stay healthy. And you know what I'm saying? Those are some big question marks. Because last year, yes, he had his highs. But his lows mostly was if he could stay on the field. So... I'm excited for KT. I think he has a lot of pressure on his shoulders. I think he has to prove to a lot of people if he could be that reliable playmaker for the future of the New York Giants. Number four, I have Kenny Galladay. We're sticking with the wide receivers. Now, with Kenny Galladay, he has to prove he was worth that contract. You know what I'm saying? He's getting paid like a top 10, top 5 wideout. And if you look at his last two years, actually, we're talking about injuries and inconsistency and not being good blatantly last year, he's not a top 10 guy. He's not. And you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to blame everything on KG for last year's bad season, but he has to prove that, hey, um, I'm here, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to prove that I could be that number one guy for the Giants, I'm going to prove I could be that number one wide receiver, because after last year, the Giants don't have a bona fide number one wide receiver for Daniel Jones, Kenny Galladay, Kenny Galladay is paid like that top 10 guy, so he has to prove that he could be that top 10 guy, um, we're looking at that contract, and I think KG, when you're looking at how the Giants are going to be running their offense, we're talking about pushing the ball down the field, being aggressive, that fits Kenny Galladay. Look at what he did, you know what I'm saying, in 2018, 2019 for the um, Detroit Lions. He was a bona fide stud. We were talking about going deep down the field, catching over people's heads, just like mossing guys. I need to see that this year from KG. So a lot of pressure on his shoulder being that number one guy for the New York Giants. And number four, we got Kenny Galladay. Number three, we're going to go to defense, and I'm going with Adoree Jackson. As soon as the Giants cut James Bradbury, eyes and fingers were pointing right, well not eyes, but fingers were pointing right toward Dory Jackson. Right toward Dory Jackson. Look at the contract. He got paid, he got paid pretty heftily last year in free agency. And the Giants did push some money down the road. You know what I'm saying? Joe Shane said he didn't want to do that. He pushed some money down the road on Dory Jackson. Dory Jackson's entering his prime. He's in his prime. And you know what I'm saying? He has proof he can be that number one guy for the New York Giants. That's a big question mark heading into 2022. Can Dory Jackson live up to being that CB1 for the Giants? Because if you look at, you know what I'm saying, the cornerbacks on the roster after Dory Jackson, now you see where I'm going with this. You know what I'm saying? So he always has to prove he can stay healthy because if he can't stay healthy, like I said, look at the cornerbacks on the roster. That's, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing new to that. You, you, that's not your first time hearing that. The Giants will have the best cornerbacks after cutting James Bradbury. And Dory Jackson has to prove that he can be that CB1 after being brought in. He can be that CB2. So um, I'm excited for Dory Jackson. He has the speed to be great. He has the aggressiveness. Got to stay healthy. You know what I'm saying? You got to play up to that CB1 level. Uh, number two, I got Saquon Barkley, man. I'm excited for him. Before I really get to why he has so much pressure, which we all know why, but I'm excited for Saquon, man. He He's always motivated, but... I think he's even more motivated. He already plays with two chips on each shoulder. I think he's playing with four chips on each shoulder right now. And he came out and said a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, actually, that he's tired of disrespect. I'm ready to go prove the haters wrong. And I'm excited to watch him do it. I'm excited to watch him do it. Look at the new offensive line for the Giants. Now, is it the best offensive line ever? No, but we're looking at it on paper. Looking at Edmund Neal. Looking at Mark Lewinsky, who's actually a better run blocker than pass blocker. And Andrew Thomas... This is probably the best offensive line Saquon Barkley has ever ran behind, ever, throughout his whole career. And, you know what I'm saying, last year, he came off that ACL injury, did, did not have a good year, did not have a good year. And now the offensive line is 
to take fault of that a little bit, but you gotta take some of that with Saquon, because if you look at how you played last, last year, you played a little bit timid, you know what I'm saying, you play with that, like, edginess, you know what I'm saying, and I'm ready to see Saquon about to play with that, with, with that burst, with that edging, with that explosiveness, after one year, after, um, off that ACL injury, so, Saquon Barkley has a lot to prove, not to prove he's the, the second overall pick, all of that, I'm done with that, I'm in the past, it, you, you can go ahead and live on with that, because that was a Dave Gettleman era, which is over, I am just want to see if he can reach back to that rookie level, that's all I want to see, prove to me that you can be that top five running back, prove to me that you're worth that second big contract with the New York Giants, which he is um, on that fifth year option, so after this year, Saquon Barkley is a free agent, he has to prove he can be that reliable franchise running back, for the New York Giants. Number one, though. We're going to end off on number one. You know who it is. It's Danny Dimes. It's Daniel Jones. He has to prove he's the franchise quarterback. That is huge. That is a lot of pressure. He's yet to do it. He is yet to do it. I think this is what? He's going into his fourth year. He's going into his fourth year. He has to prove that, you know what I'm saying, I'm that guy. This is the last straw. This is the last chance for DJ. You know what I'm saying? The Giants already fired Dave Gettleman. Who had ties to DJ? They fired Pat Sherman a couple of years ago. Who had? The, who was the reason why the Giants kind of basically drafted Daniel Jones because he fit, he fit he fit his scheme. But um, Joe Shane, Joe Shane said, "Hey, I'm not gonna kick the camel on you yet. I'm gonna give you one year to prove to me that you can be my guy because I have no ties to you. I can trade you tomorrow and go get my quarterback in the draft." Daniel Jones has to prove he can be that guy. He has to prove it. And you know what I'm saying? That automatically means that he has the most pressure on the team. The most pressure. You know what I'm saying? Ever since his rookie season, he's had the most pressure on the team. Ever since his rookie season, he had the most pressure on the team. Seeing if he can be that franchise guy. He had to prove it. And uh, we're in year four. We're in year four. The last chance, the last hoorah for DJ. And you know I'm a supporter. You know I want DJ to go out there and ball out. But uh, that alone, being that having to prove that you're the franchise quarterback in your fourth year, he has a lot to prove. He has a lot to show. You know what I'm saying? He has a lot to show, a lot of improvements. So um, that alone gives me the uh, reason to have him number one on this list. Now, there was no rookies on this list. I wasn't going to go out there and say Kayvon Tibbet has the most pressure. You know what I'm saying? He's a rookie. Those guys are rookies. You know what I'm saying? They're just trying to get their feet wet heading into their NFL careers. So um, that's going to do it. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment down below your guys who you think has the most pressure in 2022 but um that's gonna do it like again if you enjoyed leave a like comment hit the subscribe button and until then it's baby boy j Don's and i am out go giant